Hey there, my name is Victoria Bowler, and today we are looking at a few possible songs to use in the first weeks of elementary general music. We have several goals on the first day, but for the purposes of this video, let's look at some ways that we can establish expectations for the learning space as a whole. And that's going to include things like the physical space, right? So how do I move my body and how do I move my body around the room? We're also going to want to set some expectations for the social space because all of our learning experiences are going to happen in an interdependent ensemble. So what does it mean to be an active member of that musical community, of that musical ensemble? We also want to start thinking about the creative process in learning. So how can we invite some creative thinking on the very first day, but still in a safe way? So to that end, let's look at a couple things. Let's look at a warm-up routine, let's look at a welcome song, let's look at a getting-to-know-you activity and a name game, and then let's look at an activity for open space and then an action song. So a lot that we're talking about here. All of the videos that we are using today are from the first day resources in the 2023-2024 Planning Binder subscription. These are long-range plans like a scope and sequence, like song lists, things like that, the, the very big picture of the year as well as first day activities for kindergarten through upper elementary, including older beginners. Let's start with the class entrance, the warm-up routine, and the welcome song. These are two composed songs. Um, they happen to be, the first one is in Dorian, the next one is in Mixolydian. So kind of a fun way to start the first experiences in elementary general music. In our first moments of class, in the beginning of the year and beyond, we have a couple goals that we want to um, start working through for our warm-up routine. One of them is just simply getting students from the hallway and into the music class in some sort of a safe and orderly and musical way. Right. Once we're there, we're going to go through some body awareness type activities where we get to do some stretching, some mirroring. We can transition that um, from some steady beat motions, uh, depending on where students are in their kind of physical development of the beat. That will be really good for us to see. We also want to do some signs for sit and stand. And then let's get our voice in the mix as well with some vocal exploration echoes and then some greetings. And then we'll cap it all off with some sort of welcome song. Now, all of that seems like a lot and it is, but when you put it all together, it takes like three or four minutes, not very long at all, because we're moving through each of these sections very, very quickly. It's like 10 seconds at each kind of stop in our warm up routine. So let's talk about in the first week, weeks of school, getting students from outside the room to inside the classroom. We'll start by greeting them outside and we're going to make our feet do a steady beat motion. And then just silently, we are looking at students' feet. And when we see people who are doing what we are doing with our feet, we go, like it's something very interesting, very exciting. And I can see all of these people whose feet are matching mine. They hit the ground when my feet hit the ground. That's very exciting. As few words as we can do here as possible, that is what makes this whole warm up routine um, a little bit more magical, right? Okay, so let's talk about the warm up routine for the first weeks of school. All right, so we greet students outside. We've done our steady beat and our feet thing. And then we're gonna say, please stay in a line when we walk into the room and listen to our song. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a line, stay in a line. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a windy line. Feeling fine, it's music time. Eventually we lead the class in a circle. Feeling fine, it's music time. We're standing in a circle. We shake our hands high. We shake our hands low. Turn around and here we go. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a line, stay in a line. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a windy line. So there we're just gonna walk around in um, the circle formation that we've led students into. We wiggle our pinkies high. We wiggle our pinkies low. Turn around and here we go. Feeling fine, it's music 
time, stay in a line, stay in a line, feeling fine, it's music time, stay in a windy line, feeling fine, it's music time, stay in a line, stay in a line, feeling fine, it's music time, stay in a windy line. So moving into some steady beat motions and we don't tell students that that's what we're doing, we just start to do it. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a line, stay in a line. Feeling fine, it's music time. Stay in a windy line. Leading through some stretches. And we can give verbal um, prompts to students like, oh, I see your body looks just like mine. Oh, I see that your hands are doing what my hands are doing. Some motions for sit and stand. Woo! Woo woo woo! Woo! Woo woo woo! woo. Hello, first grade or hello, second grade. How are you today? And when we sing, hello, first grade, if we get back, hello, first grade, we're just going to say, my name is not first grade, my name is Mrs. Victoria. So when I sing, hello, first grade, you may respond, hello, Mrs. Victoria, let's try it. Hello, first grade, how are you today? And whatever response we get from our first graders, second graders, great. It's the first day of school, the first two classes, and we're going to build from that. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'll wiggle my fingers to say hello. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'll wave my hand to say hello. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. You get the idea. I'm so glad you're here. I'll wiggle my toes to say hello. I'm so glad you're here. As we continue with this song um, throughout the weeks, and then as we use this song with different grade levels, there are several different points of contact that we can kind of experience with this song. So one of them is just very simply, I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'll... I'll just put my hand in the air silently to ask students what they think we should do. And someone's going to say, I'll nod my head. Great idea. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'll nod my head to say hello. I'm so glad you're here. Hmm. Someone's going to say, um, I will smile with my teeth. Great idea. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. I'll smile with my teeth to say hello. I'm so glad you're here. So very, very simple um, kind of introduction to this song. And this is one that we will have several layers on top of, especially for like uh, second grade-ish area. Um, but for the first several weeks of school, just asking students how they want to say hello to each other, beautiful way to start class with a welcome song. I mentioned that our interactions are going to take place within a musical ensemble. So getting to know the other members of our ensemble is super important, both for uh, us and for the other student musicians in the room. So uh, we just came from lower elementary. Now let's do a getting to know you activity for upper elementary, and that is going to transition into a name game. Now, I mentioned some slides in this video, and, and those editable slides are inside the planning binder, but this could just as easily be just a list of questions that you write on the whiteboard, right? So here is Hey Lolly and Up the Ladder, Down the Ladder. Will you copy my motions? We're all standing in a circle. I'm starting with my right leg. Make sure you know which one is your right foot and which one is your left foot. Point to your right foot. Make sure it's the same as all of your neighbor's right feet should be opposite from mine if you're facing me. People on the sides have kind of a trickier job. Copying my motions. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, lo. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, lo. Interesting. 
interesting. What do you notice? Hold your answer in your head. Doing the same thing again. You're not singing, just copying my motions. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, lol. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, lol. What do you notice? Turn and talk. And then we'll give our signal for students to stop talking, whether that's a hand in the air, showing them a quiet thumbs up. If you have a chime, whatever it is that you have already established in your procedures, this is our time that we are practicing. And students might have all sorts of things that we notice. My next question for you, is there a pattern? Hear you listen. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Great. After a while, we've done this several different times and we can invite students to sing as they are doing our motion. So let's do it together, just teacher talk. Starting with our right foot, here we go. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Beautiful. When I say go, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, whatever grade we're using this with, when I say go, I would like you to whoosh, Find a partner and you may answer any of the questions on the board that you like. When I say what? Go. What if I say green beans? Don't go. What if I say uh, go gurt? Don't go. Here we sing to the right. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, low. Hey lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey lolly, lolly, low. Go. These questions on the board are editable, so you can change them up for whatever questions you would like students to um, work with on their own. And we'll give a five, four, three, back to the circle. Here we go. And hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Hey, lolly, lolly, low. Freeze. Don't move. Find someone different. Go. So we go through this several different times. Students need to find a different partner each time. They can answer the same question each time if they want, or they could pick a different question each time if they want. Um, when students are ready, maybe it's this class, very likely it will be in the second class. We can move to a double circle. So a nice way to do this is go through the activity in this next class. Hey, lolly, lolly, lo. Find a partner. Now, when you move back to the circle, we have an outside circle and your partner is facing you. So if you have an outside circle with a partner facing you, now we have an outside circle and an inside circle. So let's imagine that I'm on the outside circle. I'm going to take a step to my right. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. If I'm on the inside circle, what am I going to do? I will also take a step to my right. Hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. And what happens is as I move to the right and you move to your right, all of a sudden now we have switched partners. So now every time we take a step to the right, we'll be facing a different partner. We can keep this, hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Or if you want to level it up, again, it just depends on um, how much experience students have with kind of this rhythmic agency over their bodies. We can change it to, hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. New partner, hey, lolly, lolly, low. New partner, hey, lolly, lolly, lolly. Last partner, hey, lolly, lolly, low. Excuse me, hey, lolly, lolly, low. Keep the spin at the end. But now I am paired with someone in this double circle dance. So we are not going to do, uh, the teacher says go and you find a new partner. Now, whoever you land with at the end, that is the person that you will have this discussion with, with the questions on the board. And if we do this several different times, students will have the opportunity to interact with number one, everyone in the circle because we switch partners and we clap, or uh, number two, we will also have the opportunity to have some of these conversations with these getting to know you questions with other people in the circle who we might not have chosen otherwise. And that's the value of moving from a first class, students choose their partner, second class, the mixer kind of chooses the partners for us. Wrapping up our activity from the getting to know you circle dance that we were doing at whatever, um, with whatever song we were using and at whatever level, whether that is a single circle or the double circle. As we wrap that up, our last question to students is going to be, instead of looking at the board, can you with your partner decide how many steady beats are in our pattern? 
students will decide four steady beats. Can you come up with your own way to keep four steady beats in um, a pattern that you can do over and over and over and over and over? And for this activity, will you please? All right, could you try your pattern with me? A one, two, do it four times go. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, and we stop. Excellent. If you and your partner are not in our single circle seated, will you please move there now? So make sure everyone is seated on their spot, whether you are using sit spots, whether you have another way for students to sit on the floor in their circle. Try it four times in a row, and this time I'm going to try to trick you. A one, a two, a here you go. One, two, three, four, two, three. Last time. And we stop right here. Excellent. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder. Hmm, I'm looking around the room. I see lots of different steady beat patterns. You keep doing your steady beat pattern as you speak this with me. Very easy for students to pick up. Here we go. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder. Up the ladder, down the ladder, one by one, the ladder. Speak it without me. A one, a two, a here you go. Up the ladder. And we stop. My name's Miss Victoria. And you will, as students will say back, my name is Miss Victoria. And you say, no, that's not, that's not right. That's probably not your name, right? Your name is Miss Victoria is what I want you to say back. So I will say, my name is Miss Victoria. Your name is Miss Victoria. And I'm going to point to the student next to me. Let's say that their name is Jacqueline. Jacqueline would say, my name is Jacqueline. We all respond, your name is Jacqueline. Next to Jacqueline might be Xander. And I would speak it for Xander. My name is Xander. Your name is Xander. And next to Xander uh, might be Rachel. My name is Rachel. Your name is Rachel. So I'm going to guide the class through who is speaking and who is responding um, by gesturing to them and kind of speaking everyone's for them. Let's try it. My name is Mrs. Victoria. Your. My name is Jacqueline. Your. My name is Xander. Your. My name is Rachel. Your. So we're going to go around the circle with people sharing their names four people at a time. We are playing a drum or some sort of beat keeping device. Everyone else in the circle seated with their partner, they are doing whatever body percussion motion that they did. Now, um, whatever body percussion pattern that they created with their partner, you know, five minutes ago or so. If you sense that uh, the body percussion thing is not working, then it just turns into this. Everybody does this pattern. So they still create the pattern with their partner, but then we will transition to everyone just doing the same exact thing, right? So definitely um, several different layers of complexity that we can add to this, just depending on what students need at the time. The idea though is that they've had some sort of creative body percussion invitation that they've done with their partner. We're all seated in a circle. We speak up the ladder, down the ladder. Students go around four at a time and share their names. Let's talk about this idea of open space. Open space is a really important concept <laughs> because it's how we keep each other safe as we move throughout the physical space of the music room. So we've talked about lower, we've talked about upper. Now let's zoom to middle elementary. In the planning binder, this activity is for second and third grade. So let's talk about uh, introducing or reviewing this idea of how we use our physical bodies in the learning environment. Will you copy my motions? Your voice is off, your ears are on, your bodies are copying me. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres, así. Frozen, like a statue. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres, así. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres, así. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres, así. Great. So we can go through several rounds of that. What do you notice about our song? And answers are going to be divergent. We're going to use whatever classroom signal we have for students to wait for their turn to talk. 
for all of us probably is going to be your hand in the air and um, that needs to be a silent hand. So if your hand is in the air and you're talking to your neighbor, that's not a silent hand, which means I cannot call on you, right? So show me your silent hand that you have something to share that it's something that you notice. This time, I'm gonna ask students to sing the second half of the song. They've heard it several, several, several different times. Uh, uno, dos y tres, así, uno. Uno, dos y tres, así. One and two and three, like this. This time, could you do your own statue pose? You may do anything that is safe and musical and school appropriate. Now, here's the key. If you fall down, ugh, then you cannot be a statue in our statue garden. So make sure it's a pose that you can balance if you choose to use it with one foot. A las estatuas de marfil, uno. Frozen. Students are singing the second half. I'm not going to sing with them. A las estatuas de marfil, uno. Excellent. This is our time to have our open space discussion. So we're gonna look around the room for areas that have open space. I'm gonna ask a few students at a time to blow a bubble around their bodies and move around the room while we sing. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres. And they're frozen in open space. And then as a class, we can decide, yes, they are in open space. Mm, I'm not sure if they are or no, they are not in open space. We'll give them another shot. Here they go, moving around. A las estatuas de marfil, uno, dos y tres. And they're frozen in open space. Same thing. Yes, they're in open space. We're not really sure if that counts as open space or no, they're not in open space. They come back. I'm going to choose another group of students to blow a bubble around their bodies. They go around and do the activity. Eventually, either in this class, if these are students who already know all about open space and this is just review, or in the next class, however, you know, the, the time works out. Um, in the next class, everyone is walking around the room in open space. And at the end, uno, dos y tres, así. Your statue needs to be frozen and you need to be in open space. If you are not frozen and if you are not in open space, then the teacher is going to come around and whoosh, you are out, your statue sits down. Whoosh, you are out, your statue sits down. And as you are seated, notice that now we have another object in the classroom for students to avoid as they are walking around looking for open space. So this is a concept that we will uh, revisit throughout the year, but the idea of open and closed space in music class is going to be really important to us. So we're going to work on the physical space. We also talked about the social space, but we also want to make sure that in addition to building these expectations, we also wanna make sure we're giving students a creative invitation to set the tone for what class is going to be like, what the learning process is going to be like. Because in our teaching, we do not use creative prompts just at the end of the learning process, right? They happen all the way through the learning process. So we talked about a way to uh, give a musical or a creative invitation with upper elementary. And now let's look at using creative thinking, using our imaginations in lower elementary. Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. What do you think we are doing? looking for a hand in the air. I'm gonna call on someone. Um, eventually we'll guide students, or if students already know this song, they will know that we are hammering something. Will you take your hammer out? Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. I think that actually, as I look at what we have been building, I am so excited because this is a boat. Will you help me finish it? Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. <gasps> can I tell you something? We started out building a boat, but can I tell you, this has turned into a doghouse. Oh my goodness. Let's get on our knees so we can finish the roof of our doghouse. Here we go. Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo.
But can I tell you something? We started out building a boat, but then it turned into a doghouse. Can I tell you something else though? The next thing that I see that it has actually turned into is um, a swing set. Oh, that is awesome. Will you help me finish up our swing set? Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. <gasps> Do you know what I see? It's not a swing set anymore. What have we built? Looking for a hand in the air. Students are going to um, give us various levels of hands in the air without blurting out. And again, this is a process and this is why we practice this, right? Um, so we're gonna call on someone. They say it is a, a, a race car. It is um, a, a PlayStation, whatever it is. Oh, you're right. We just need to finish it. Here we go. Con mi martillo, martillo, martillo. Con mi martillo, martillo, yo. All right, we've looked today at several musical options for the first day of school. We are using active musical invitations to start the year, jumping into the physical space. We've talked about the social space and we've talked about the creative space. All of these work to set kind of a more holistic picture of what the learning environment looks like in an active um, and student-centered elementary general music class. If you have a question or comment on this video, I would love to hear from you. You can drop a comment below. You can shoot me an email, victoria at victoriabowler.com, or you can find me on Instagram. I am at Victoria Bowler. I'll also add a link to the planning binder below, uh, just in case you want to kind of check it out for your own personal situation. All right, that wraps it up. Thanks so much for watching and happy teaching.